In a microservices architecture, each service is designed to be small, independent, and loosely coupled. But unlike monolithic applications where all components share a single database, in microservices, you don't want different services to share the same database. Because it creates tight coupling which can lead to performance bottlenecks, scalability issues, and difficult service evolution. This is where database per service pattern comes in. Each microservice owns its own database, giving it full control over its data, schema, and how it stores or retrieves information. In this video, we'll break down the database per service pattern with practical examples and address its pros and cons. The database per service pattern means that each microservice has its own separate database. This isolation ensures that each microservice can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently without having to coordinate with other services over data. By adopting this pattern, we eliminate the risk of changes in one service affecting others. For example, imagine an e-commerce platform. You might have separate services for managing inventory, customer data, and order processing. Using the database per service pattern, the inventory service will have its own database, customer service will have its own, and order service will manage its own data as well. This separation ensures that if you need to update the schema in the inventory service database, it doesn't interfere with the customer or order service database. And there are several ways to implement this pattern and keep a services persistent database private. In private tables per service pattern, each microservice gets its exclusive set of tables in a shared database, but those tables aren't accessible to the other services. In schema per service, each service has its own database schema. Multiple schemas can exist in the same database, but they are isolated from one another. And in database service per service pattern, each service has its own database server entirely separate from others. Regardless of which option you choose, the services communicate through APIs, not through direct database access. And this keeps the system loosely coupled and ensures that each microservice control its own data, making the entire operation seamless. Let's say a credit-based financial service requires comprehensive data about users to access their financial health or credit score to determine their capacity to repay loans. It aggregates data from various sources like financial accounts, assets, spending patterns, income sources, and existing loans. Now imagine if all of these microservices shared a single database. Every time a user makes a request, say to calculate their home loan eligibility, the services would need to aggregate data from multiple tables, and this can lead to higher latencies and poor user experience. In contrast, with the database per service pattern, each microservice manages its own database based on its domain of function. For example, one microservice handles eligibility checks, and another manages EMI or loan calculations. Each service has a separate database optimized for its task. So when a user checks its loan eligibility, the eligibility service queries its own database. If the user then moves to calculate an EMI, the EMI calculation service accesses its database independently. The separation reduces latency and improves overall system performance. Now, one of the biggest challenges in using the database per service pattern is ensuring data consistency across services. Because each service has its own database, maintaining data integrity can be tricky especially when transactions span across multiple services. For example, imagine a user requests to apply for a new credit card. This seemingly simple action might involve several microservices, each with its database. For example, user profile service stores basic user information such as name, address, etc. The credit history service maintains the user credit history such as past loans, credit card usage, payment behavior. Income verification service validates the user's income information. Credit score calculation service may analyze all data and calculate the user credit score and credit card application service handles the actual application process. Now suppose the income verification service successfully updates the user income in its database, but the credit score calculation service fails to recalculate the score due to a temporary network issue. Now the user's credit score might be outdated, leading to incorrect decisions in subsequent credit applications. Also imagine the user applies for a credit card and gets initial approval. However, a final check with an external fraud detection service, say integrated with credit card application service, flags the application as potentially fraudulent. So if the credit card application service fails to update its database and communicate this to other services, the user might mistakenly assume that the application was successful. While the database per service pattern offers numerous benefits, it also introduces challenges. Distributed transactions become complex since each service has its own database, requiring eventual consistency models instead of traditional transactions. Data duplication may occur to improve performance, but it can lead to inconsistencies if not handled properly. Additionally, cross-service queries are tricky as you can't easily join data across different databases, forcing services to communicate with each other to retrieve the necessary information. 
and to address these challenges, one can implement an event-driven architecture. When a significant change occurs, like an update to income or credit history, publish an event. For example, the income verification service can emit an income updated event with a new income data. Other services such as the credit score calculation service can subscribe to this event and perform necessary actions. This decoupled communication ensures that the data changes are propagated efficiently and reliably across the system. Do check out my video on event-driven architecture, where I break down the key concepts with examples from Netflix and Uber. You'll learn how they use event-driven systems to build scalable, fault-tolerant architectures ensuring smooth operations under heavy load. Many large-scale companies leverage the database per service pattern to ensure autonomy, scalability, and resiliency. For instance, Amazon isolates data for different services to enable independent scaling, while Netflix empowers teams to own their data stores. This approach is ideal for highly distributed environments where microservices are deployed across multiple clusters. It allows each service to scale on its own, helping systems handle massive traffic volumes with minimal downtime.